Weight loss is not complex. Not really. It's just math. And if you understand the math, you can lose or gain weight as easily as you would like. We've all heard calories in versus calories out. If you eat more than you burn, you gain weight. If you burn more than you eat, you lose weight. We've all heard this, and it's somewhat true. And then what else have we all heard? We've all heard that 3,500 calories equals one pound of body fat. Okay, that's been around forever. I've been hearing it since I was a kid. It's been around forever, and it's generally accepted to be true. So does that mean that if I want to lose one pound in a week, all I have to do is decrease my daily diet by 500 calories because 500 times seven days equals 3,500 calories. That equals one pound of body fat. It sounds like it should be true. It's not true. That's not the way it works. I'm sorry. So 3,500 calories equates to one pound of body fat. I'll stick to that. That's okay. I agree. But cutting my diet by 500 calories per day, even though that adds up to 3,500 calories by the end of the week, is not the same as 3,500 calories of fat being burned off of my body. If I cut those calories, depending on what I chose to cut, did I cut from proteins? Did I cut from veggies or fruits? My natural sugars that I like so much? Where did I cut it? And just by cutting those 500 calories, is that by itself going to make me lose all the weight? It is not. So here's what I task you with. The math involved in weight loss is extremely complex, but we can simplify it into three basic numbers. Your metabolic rate. There are a lot of terms for your metabolic rate. BMR, that's your basal metabolic rate. RMR, that is your resting metabolic rate. And then they like to break it down into BEE, which is your basal energy expenditure. Or REE, which is your resting energy expenditure. We're going to ignore most of that crap, okay? So here's what you need to know about your metabolic rate. Your basal metabolic rate, your BMR, is basically the number of calories that you would burn if you were to stay in bed inactive all day. So that number doesn't mean jack squat to us for, for weight loss. We're gonna toss that number aside. Goodbye BMR. Your RMR actually takes into consideration living a normal life. So your RMR is actually your BMR plus a normal amount of activity. And this is gonna include everything from like going to the store, doing a regular job, watching television, using the bathroom, a regular life and the activities included therein. The first thing you need to do is find an online RMR calculator. I will link to one in the description of this video. Um, you'll notice if you use three or four different calculators that the numbers are slightly different. That's fine. You're not looking for an end all be all, this is definitive, this particular number is the only number that matters situation. These are all going to be estimates and averages based off of what they collect from you and the algorithm that they choose to use. But you have to start somewhere. So your RMR, that's where you start. RMR, start. Okay? There are some things that, that affect your metabolic rate. Some things you cannot control your heredity, your age. These are things that will affect you in a negative way when you're talking about your RMR. There are some things you can do to increase your RMR. The very first and most important is gain muscle. If you grow muscle, you burn more calories naturally, even at rest. So 
Muscle growth, super important. Choosing certain foods over others helps you also. Some foods, like proteins, burn more calories processing than foods like, say, fats that burn very little calories as they process. Also, protein and greens. If you've seen my other videos, you know that's the diet of choice for me and anyone else looking to build muscle and cut fat. Now, you know I am an advocate for water fasting, but something that happens when you water fast or you crash diet or whatever else, where you're losing a lot of fat quickly, something that happens is your RMR decreases. Now, it doesn't decrease as much as people would like you to believe. It only goes down by 100 to 200 calories per day. If you know that it's going to happen, you can easily calculate that in to your math and not have to worry about the weight gain that would come normally being associated with a 200 point daily bump. Did you know that your resting metabolic rate is affected by your actual body weight? Your metabolic rate increases with your weight. So you can see here that me, and I used my stats here, 208 pound version of myself burns a lot less calories as a basic resting metabolic rate than a version of myself that's 298 pounds. A substantial difference in calorie burn. The second number we're going to talk about today is the thermogenic effect of food. We're going to call it the TEF. That's what it's called anyway. So I'm just going to jump on the bandwagon. Okay. Now, your TEF is basically the number of calories that it takes to process food when you eat it. Different types of food have a different TEF percentage. With proteins being the highest processing value here. That's why proteins are really great. They have a TEF value of 15 to 30 percent, which means 15 to 30 percent of the calories taken in when you eat protein are used and consumed to process the protein you ate. So if I eat a thousand calories of grilled chicken breast, that's all protein, 150 to 300 of those calories are going to be burned up processing the protein out. And that's because protein actually processes slowly through the body and so it takes longer to digest. Fats, however, are on the very 0 to 3 percent bottom of the barrel here. So fats don't burn a whole lot of energy to break down inside your body in your stomach. Carbs, greens, veggies, they're at somewhere between 5 and 10 percent. Now you know, those are some numbers that play a little bit of a factor, but not that much. Because, and here's the, the reason I say it doesn't matter that much, okay? Uh, let's say you eat an entire bowl of spinach. Whole bowl. We're going to say three cups of spinach. That's about 30 to 40 calories. Okay, 40 calories. 5 percent of 40 calories is the number of calories it's going to take to process it out, which means two calories. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't track one or two calories. I'm tracking by the hundreds, baby, because I'm looking for real change when I'm diagnosing and doing the math for my weight loss or my muscle growth. However, there are a few things that you can do to increase your TEF, and they're the same thing that's going to help you increase your RMR. So I'm going to go into these numbers for you. You can eat smaller meals. Why is this important? Well, because it keeps your body processing food longer, which keeps it active longer, which means you burn more calories over the course of a day. You can drink drinks that have caffeine in them. It increases your heart rate, thereby increases your metabolism and you're going to burn more calories. Spicy foods. Did you know that eating spicy foods actually makes you feel full longer? Also, your body has to react to the spiciness, burns more calories, raises your metabolism. 
again, protein. Stick to proteins and greens. They're both very good for you. They're both going to help you process and burn more calories. The third number, and I argue one of the most important, is your calorie burn. Now, there are a lot of different terms for this. We're just going to call it the calorie burn. This is you being active above and beyond what is normally considered your day. So if you have a standard day where you wake up, you go to work, you eat lunch, you come home, you watch TV and do dinner, you go to bed, that's your day, all right? In that day, you may go to the grocery store. You may go see a movie because it's your day off. You may go do a lot of different things that I'm not gonna get into right now. But none of that is gonna add to your actual calorie burn. Your calorie burn you're going to have to add yourself. And this is going to be a high activity tracked normally by your heart rate. This is going to be your cardio, your high intensity training, your strength training, punching a bag, sex, anything that boosts your heart rate for any length of time is going to add to your burn. Your burn is important. So now we've gone over the three numbers. You've got your resting metabolic rate, your RMR, okay? And then you've got your thermogenic effect of food. That's number two. And then your calorie burn. That's number three. Okay? These are the three numbers that matter the most to me when I'm calculating weight loss. And it'll, it'll let me do the math so that I can calculate what number of calories I wish to intake to obtain the loss rate that I'm targeting. So... A 3,500 calorie deficit is not always going to equal one pound of weight lost because 3,500 calories may equal a pound of body fat, but you're not always losing just fat. On a diet, when you're working out, you're breaking down lean muscle, lean body mass, as well as fat. And because there's a ratio here that varies with an individual based off of you specifically, your genetics, your age, your current weight, your level of activity, the amount of muscle mass you have on your body. These are all numbers that get calculated in and for you to find your exact sweet spot, you have to know a whole lot more about your body than most people do. So that's why the 3,500 calories can be a guideline but it is not set in stone as a rule. The rate of loss that people experience is also based on the individual. I have a higher rate of loss than my daughter. I'm older, I should have a lower rate of loss, but because I have more muscle mass and because my body has adapted to years and years and years of training, fasting, dieting, my body has adapted just like your body is adapting at all times.